Hey guys, now I've been playing around with this amp because for a good while, up until very recently, I hadn't worked it out. I had a bit of a problem with this amplifier and I'm going to show it to you. And let me just first show you the problem, I suppose. So, here we are. So, I've got, um, we got 31 volts going in. Well, let me move my arm around. But yeah, 31.1. So, that's um, the output on my transformer that I'm using. Now you could use a 25 volt transformer on this. Um, on the supply, I'm using a 22 volt output AC output transformer. Right. So that times your 1.1414 gives you 31.1 volts as DC. And so I've put 31.1 volts DC in here. Yeah. So we got a, a plus and a minus signal. And here it is. Now, <clears throat> this is the interesting thing about this. So, my scope is just set up. So, you're, you're going to see uh, what this is going to do in a second. Let's move that out of the way, even though you can see that's somewhere okay. But trace. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start turning the um, turning the input up. So, up here is my little generator. Um, we've got a 1 kilohertz sine wave um, and no voltage going in at the moment. And that's what we're going to do now. So watch this look. As I start turning it up, so uh, 0.5, okay, 0.1, everything looks normal. Three, then look what's happening down the bottom here. So I'll just, just so you can see that easier. You can see what's happening down the bottom here. And as I go up higher, so this is 1.4, 1.6, sorry, and as I go up higher, you can see it's like clipping off down the bottom. And you've got a slight bit happening at the top now. But that's not really the interesting part. What the interesting part is here is if I just go across and start dropping the voltage, look how much that cleans that up. And now we're down to 26 volts. Actually, I don't know if you can see that, so I'm just going to zoom in on that a little bit. It's 26 volts. And you can see that's cleaned that up. Now, this had me baffled for a while because, you know, it's sort of pretty equal here. So if I start pumping the input again, Okay, so, okay, we've got some pretty major distortion going on down there. Why don't you just back that off? Now we've got a clipping evenly, top and bottom up. I'll just, uh, so you can see that a little bit easier. Clipping evenly, top and bottom. And um, we're down at 23 volts on the DC. So let's just take that back up again. Okay, now we got the original, that's a sort of 31.1. So I've got to turn it down, and that's at 2.1 volts going in. Uh, peak to peak, that is. Well, you can see that. So I'm going to turn that back down, and we get it down to about 1.4, 1.2, something like that. What's that right now? 1.2, and it's nice and cleaned up again. So for a very while, that was really staying my head, and I couldn't figure it out. So what I ended up doing was, I'm just going to turn it off for now, so I can sort of uh, take about on the on here without doing any damage. So I ended up taking out this, um, we got a, um, oh, there's a, a current, um, oh, I can't remember what you call it. Basically, it's just, this, this LED is for a 1.6 milliamp current drop across it. And you've got this differential pair going on here. So I took all this out. I changed the differential pair transistors first. Didn't make any difference. I took this one out for the constant current. Didn't make any difference. And then I noticed something. While I'm sat there scratching my head, I'm thinking, well, because I don't know, you know, all I can do is trial and error, experiment with it, you know, on a power supply, connect it with a scope. And I ensured things, like I made sure I got really to room temperature. I set it at 21 degrees in here. I waited um, for a good 10, 15 minutes, and I, I put a, a millivolt meter on the two collectors of the transistors so I could see the voltage drop across these two resistors here. Now I know the resistors I'm using are slightly different from the one in the actual circuit so I don't expect it to all be um, you know a complete mirror image of the results of the circuit just because there are slight differences on this one. But it still works great, don't get me wrong. Um, so yeah, so I can see the millivolts uh, difference there, and every times the the millivolts. So what we want to do is, it's, I'm looking for like 75 milliamp um, quiescent current. So if I use 50 millivolts, 
um, that will give me essentially uh, the times 1.5 I think it is isn't it um, probably wrong on that that will give me 75 milliamps and that works out right as well so yeah 1.5 um, 75 milliamps of quiescent current which is ideal for this especially if you're going to drive it quite hard and even though I don't normally you know I've had a few friends around and just showing them that it does bang out some nice sounds and and it does you know for all the all the amplifier circuits that are out there if you want one that you actually want to use it in your home and have it as your main amplifier source you're not going to do you know for, for a home built thing you're not going to go wrong with this this is this is nice it is nice it's uh it's great to sit and listen to music quietly it's nice to hear it banging out a bit as well with this and it does work really really well and this size heatsink even with me cracking this thing up um, around about 60% and that is in this size room it's getting to the it's just it's too much um, even with doing that this heatsink was still coping with it so set up the lower levels where you know you're ready to maybe at, um, use a volume scaling from the computer if you're only at like 120 on your computer uh, this thing is kind of slightly warm but it's not hot nowhere near anything like that so it does work really well but anyway so I digress so anyway I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the other channel and I noticed because um, the other channel I, I popped a lot of the um, transistors a good while ago I, I can't remember what it was I did wrong I did something wrong but they went oh that was it yeah and I hadn't coupled the heat sink, not this heat sink, I had one small one each, they weren't coupled properly, overheated, blew out the hat with transistors, basically your short comes across here, and it sort of like, <laughs> blows its way back a bit, didn't do the front end here, they did the, um, they did those, those transistors there, the drivers and the, um, and the, and the, the output transistors. What I noticed was like, and I've put it back on, because I've taken it off, you know, I've, got, I've already done all this, testing and I've taken it off but I put it back on just to show you that this particular transistor here is a it says 14 now the ones so this one's a new one that's why I wanted to power it off in case I dropped anything on here this one says 56 on it or 54 let me just look inside my thing so if you've got rubbish for you there I just need to see this yeah it says 54 so I don't know if you can see that on there I certainly can't with my my old eyes are going to go for a... Anyway, it doesn't really matter, does it? Let me just put that back to autofocus. So, yeah, so this says 54 on it. The other ones say 54 on them. And the one that was on here said 14. So these are M MXP's BD140s, which is the PMP version. But it says, like, 56 or 54 uh, down in the corner. And all the other ones say that. And taking this off because it said 14, then I put a 54 on there. Yay, we haven't got any of those issues. It's it got the full rail voltage, and it works great. The same as what the other channel is. And this is what I'm going to do today. So I've got a whole new batch through uh, of these transistors. And they're all 14s. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out the old 14, and I'm going to put this 14 in its place. And see if we get the same issue. See if it's a thing with these 14s running with the 54s, or whether it was just that one particular transistor. And then see if we can see the difference between that and this. And we'll crack them open to see what it's like inside with the die and stuff. Okay, so let me just desolder and get set up for that. Okay, so I've taken out the, um, I put one of the new ones in. This, this one here is what I put in. This is a 54. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a little 54 ring down. This is fine. Um, so I put one of the, the new, because like I said, because you can buy these so cheap. These are complementary pair. Um, but you can buy them so cheap. I think they were like less than three pounds for a hundred pieces, 50 of each. Yeah, come on. Uh, for me to have a little play around with now blowing them up, mm, it's going to be quite good. Anyway, so I put that in. It's just like, it's bargaining. You know, it's, it's, it's fine. So now we're going to take a peek. So we're still not exactly the same voltage. A little bit of uh, same voltage. So I'm just going to start turning this up. Okay, turn all the way up until we get. So around about there is where we start clipping out. You can see that. 
on the footage. Uh, in actual fact, if I just do this, I can video that for us as well. So I can put the proper clip in if you can't see this properly. And as I back off, you can see, look, just a start clipping. Off the phone, just went to do that again. So we're all the way up. Um, here we're going to get 16.5. No, a little bit more, that's clipping. So 16.5. Or clipping our meter goes all the way across there in case any of you wondering how far I can go fully full pelt with the meter so we can do the math for that we've got six 2.6 going in you can see that 2.6 volts peak to peak and it's going in and that's the RMS or was it 16.5 okay um, we can actually have a look I'm going to turn that back up again to full so you can have a look and see um, So it's clipping, no clipping, a little bit of clipping, no clipping. And we're using about an amp each side. Let's turn that down. Put back on autofocus. Oh, put on autofocus. Oh, I love this phone. It's so annoying sometimes. Okay, so we get to see what's going on there. So it turns out that it's just maybe, maybe this is just an old knackered transistor. I can't remember where it came from. It's probably come out of something else. Looking how short the, the leads are, but that could have just been what I put it in. But I have noticed something. Look at the back of this. You see the shape of the back? Come on, let's do it in comparison with another one. I'm just out of here. Just going to randomly pick one so it's not as though I'm trying to pick a. See that. Look at that, look, they're both the same manufacturer apparently, but they've got different It's different on the back, and what's this one like? Please don't be different again. It's quite hard for me to see that, just okay. So it looks more like this. Really, and it's got like a little bit going down the bottom here. This one goes up. This one, uh, where's my finger? There it is. Huh? This one goes up there, and it's got a little bit there on the edge where these two don't. Because maybe this is a, a dodgy one, but what I'll do is I'll crack one of these new ones and dodgy one, and we'll have a look inside it. Probably do that in another video. This one's gone on a bit. But yeah, so if you are getting that, possibly on the one side, one channel, um, it could be down to those, it could be down to your transistors. It may not be, it looks like a bit of a biasing thing, doesn't it? But there's that, um, where you can see it in the bottom of the waveform, you can see it's almost like there was a, some sort of persistence down there. That that lower, I don't know what they call it, the cup. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what they call that bottom part of the waveform, but yeah. But it turned out to be this. So it's really nice actually knowing now that this I can kick it really, really high up to I've never taken it so it's like batting it across at that one amp there. But it is nice knowing that I can do that and um it's it performs it performs quite well. And this like I said the heat sink works really well. It's cool at the minute. A little tiny bit of warmth on it, but you'd spit your tea out if it was that cold. <laughs> yeah, it's a great little lamp project. Honestly, if you haven't checked it out, if you're thinking about building a little lamp project that you can actually use, uh, and not something that you're going to play with for a little bit, and then, now oh, this is rubbish. This isn't rubbish. This is quite good. In actual fact, I thought it was that good that I went and invested in some non general purpose. Uh, electrolytics and um, film caps but do I notice a big difference between the two no no there is a there is a subtle difference there are subtle differences don't get me wrong and it is worth it having them but if you think that you're gonna have a a, a black and white contrast between the capacitors it's not like that at all 
you'll get a better you'll probably get more of a contrast if you move your speakers closer together or further out so your um, the bass is in tune the two the two woofers come in tune with each other and give you a, a better more solid bass spacing on your speakers and there's massive contrast there you can have or there's a massive contrast between using crappy hookup wires like this then going off the speaker cables or putting decent speaker cables directly onto the outputs and again massive difference if you do that um, or even if you move your speakers closer together or further out you'll hear a big difference in your speakers especially when it comes to the bass and that's always worth experimenting with with the capacitors the subtle changes are there subtle differences but it is more subtle and it is more for fine-tuning your ears uh, to it you're not going to get a, a big massive difference so anyway I thought that was really interesting I thought that was uh, because it baffled me for quite a bit until I sort of decided to take it apart again and you know start going through the board uh, I used the scope you know I could find at this end part here I, I could see on the scope that I got that issue with the signal from the input but I didn't really know what else to do with it, but I noticed the difference, and that was what's taken me to it. I mean, it's, I've not managed to troubleshoot this to find it. I've managed to trial and error, take parts out, change them over. And so, but still, you get to learn a bit more about the circuit. And, you know, um, yeah, so it's still worth it. It's still worth it. Gets me more and more familiar with this little amp, and I do like it, so I'm going to stick with this for a while. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.